right, it's time to talk about GPIO. Uh, GPIO is, of course, an acronym. It stands for General Purpose I.O. Um, and I.O. is an acronym, which stands for Input Output. Uh, GPIO, people often say General Pan I.O., uh, but it's technically General Purpose I.O. There are 33 pins on our PIC that can be used for digital input, digital output. Uh, so I mentioned this last time. You can use uh, all of them except for power and ground on this side, uh, power and ground on that side, master clear, and technically you can use the two programming pins, but you would have to like program it, then unplug it. So we recommend you don't, right? Um, so essentially we say that there are 33 total. Uh, so that's the ones you've got to work with. The way you use them is you have to decide first and foremost, um, is this uh, gonna be an analog or digital? Um, and so obviously for the things we care about in this video like lecture, uh, digital. Once you decide it's going to be GPIO, is it going to be an input? Um, if it is, you're going to read it, so you're going to have it like connected to a switch or something. Um, or is it an output? And if it's an output, you're going to have a control like a motor or an LED or control the LCD. Um, so inputs or outputs. If it's an output uh, and you set it to one, obviously it's high. Uh, set it to zero and it's low. That should be pretty obvious. The way in which you do it is with these special function registers. Uh, I'm guessing you saw that one coming. So first you set analog or digital, uh, then you set input or output, um, and then you set like whether it's high or low. So uh, quick review from last time. Uh, setting it analog or digital, we have a, uh, a special function register called ADCON1. Um, what we're doing today we will just be setting ADCON1 to be a value of 0x, 0f. Um, so that means all digital, don't use the analog world. Um, and you should hopefully already have that set up uh, in, your, in your project. All right, so new stuff. Um, so first is the special function register called TRIS. Uh, so it'll be TRIS uh, and then the port letter. So TRIS, you know, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, since there are 33, you know, not all of them are full, otherwise you'd have 40. Um, and so the way you use TRIS is you set each bit individually. If you set a bit to a 1 um, inside that special function register, then it makes that pin an input. The easy way to remember it is that a 1 looks like an I. So it, it kind of works out easy to remember there. If you set a bit to 0, uh, that makes it an output. Um, and of course, O and zero look very similar. Just a little tidbit, most microcontrollers work the exact opposite of this. Uh, picks are weird um, in that they have this like zero looks like zero. The reason other people do it opposite is because everything defaults to zero and they wanted them to default to input. Um, so pick is the only one of various microcontrollers that uses this easy to remember I is one trick. So I like that, so that's nice. Uh, quick little examples, um, so if you wanted to set all of port B to be an input, you would just say FF, that sets every bit as a 1. Um, and if you wanted port C to be output, set it to 0, 0, which puts every single 1 to a 0. It's no great surprise uh, that you have 8 pins uh, in a port, and you also have 8 bits um, in a special function register the bits are entirely independent, right? So this is why people use things like binary uh, to set something. So if you wanted to set just the top one and the bottom one uh, to an input, uh, you could do that uh, by setting it using binary. To be honest, most firmware programmers, they get sick of binary because it's hard to read. Um, so they just use hex. And I know that sounds crazy, but they convert from hex to binary so fast um, that they would probably just write 8-1 because they know it's the same thing. Um, and so I just, trying to get you in that habit as well. Uh, let's go ahead and let you practice some. Uh, so see if you can solve these on your own. All right, I'm going to work them as well. So coming down through here, uh, we've got the bottom two pins um, as input. You could, of course, use hex uh, if you're comfortable with hex. Um, if you didn't like hex as well, uh, you could always write it in binary. Oops, wrote too many. Uh, XNA on that one. Um, so if you wanted the bottom two as input, they would just be 1, 1. Uh, if you wanted 4 down there, uh, it would be F. Um, 
most of the time you end up setting like the entire port to the same thing. I don't know why that happens, but it seems to. Um, so if you wanted all inputs, uh, that's FF. Um, all outputs is zero, zero. Um, and I've got that written out uh, a little cleaner as well. So hopefully that's pretty easy for you. In addition to the TRIS register, you also have the port register. If a pin is an input, uh, then you will read uh, that, that bit in the port register, and it will tell you if like the switch is high or the switch is low. If it's an output, uh, then you will set it, right? So you'll set it high with a 1, set it low with a 0. That's pretty straightforward. People, people tend to get that, right? Uh, so the quick little example is if you wanted to turn off all the LEDs, you could say 0, 0. If you wanted to turn them all on, you can make it FF. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty, pretty easy to do. In fact, I mean, if you wanted to, you could even try it, right? It's not hard. Um, so if you just switch this to FF, so, and you run it, um, then what should happen is instead of all the LEDs being off, uh, which is how it is now, um, as soon as it's uh, programming and then running, they all come on, right? So you can see the real power of special function registers uh, pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and give you one more example. Uh, see if you can read this uh, and then make it happen. So um, make them all analog, or sorry, make them all digital. Um, make uh, the bottom, what is it, the bottom four be outputs, um, and go ahead and make the tops inputs. And then of those bottom four, make the bottom two be high. So see if you can do that on your own. All right, I'll go ahead and work it as well. Uh, so the make them all uh, digital. Um, we don't need a library function for that. That's easy. Uh, we can just say uh, 0x, 0f. I have that one memorized. Uh, and then if we wanted to set something for port A, we would use TRIS. Um, if we wanted the, the bottom four to be outputs, that's a 0. And the top four to be inputs, that's a 1. Um, I'm going to choose to write it in hex because I like hex. Um, so it'd be FO. And then if we wanted to set uh, port A, uh, the bottom two be high, which is a one. You could do it in binary if you wanted, uh, but I have this love of X. Um, so it's zero, three. Uh, so there's the answer. If you chose to do it in binary, fine with me, uh, no harm. Uh, but there's the answer to that. And if you wanted to play with it even more, um, I mean, you could play with changing this value of port C uh, to anything you wanted. Uh, so, and then you can like see if you can figure out what's going to happen, right? So I set it to 3C, so that's going to set four middle ones to, to one. Um, and the four middle ones in this uh, kind of come around the bottom because it kind of goes like a U um, around there. All right, so that's the end of uh, general purpose I.O. Uh, we'll talk some more about uh, bit stuff next time. See you then.